Hello flowers, it's me, Cozy Bee. I hope you're all feeling healthy and hydrated today. Welcome back to our little cryptid zoo where our zookeeper is on his way to take care of Miss Foot <laughs> and her mate Bigfoot. <laughs> and maybe someday we'll have some little feet. I'm quite happy with the area that we made last time. It's full of lush trees. Our guests are enjoying the clear pathways we've set for them and definitely not wandering off where they shouldn't be. At least I hope not. We do have a tour guide. I'm not sure what he's doing way over here. Let's assign him to work Bigfoot's exhibit. That way he can tell our guests all about Bigfoot. And let's help him out to get started. There you go, bud. All right, so today's episode, we're moving up this way into the area just over here. Let's back out a little bit so we can see better. There we go. We're gonna be moving up into this area where we're gonna have the Loch Ness Monster, uh, or Nessie. And as we work on Ness's area, we'll fill out all these gaps on our way. Now let's see, what do they require? Adopt a Loch Ness Monster. Loch Ness monsters live alone or in small family groups. Loch Ness monsters enjoy water lilies in their tanks. So can this animal be placed in a tank? We can try that, but I'm not sure. Well, let's try first to do a regular exhibit as I said when I was making Bigfoot's enclosure, they don't have to be this large. Zoo Tycoon doesn't require this much space at all. You can make extremely small enclosures, which I don't really like. I, I really want my animals to be comfortable in their tanks. It must be Christmas. There goes Santa. I believe if it's Christmas Day. Uh, nope, <laughs> it's too late. Probably a frequent visitor to the cryptid zoo.
here, I'm going to create some waterfalls that come down because both of these exhibits are aquatic as well. And then I'm going to have that water kind of carry on down over here through Nessie's exhibit. So I'm going to work on creating the illusion of a river. So let's adopt a Loch Ness Monster. Loch Ness Monsters live alone or in small family groups. Loch Ness Monsters enjoy water lilies in their tanks. Now I'm not sure if that means this exhibit requires a tank, um, but we'll find out. I know that eggs can only hatch on dry land, uh, but let's see what the late 90s and early 2000s had to say about Nessie. The Loch Ness, well that's, that's not bad compared to Bigfoot. The Loch Ness Monster is one of the most famous undiscovered animals in the world. In Scotland, it is fondly known as Nessie. This aquatic animal, or its ancestors, is said to have lived in Loch Ness, Britain's largest freshwater lake, for over 2,000 years. The earliest evidence of Nessie's existence are standing stones found in the area of the lake. These stones contain pick carvings dating back to the 1st century AD. The carvings show a swimming beast with a serpentine body, long beak, flippers in place of feet, and a long tail, a creature resembling no known animal. Later, Scottish folklore warned children that a malevolent water creature might try to lure them into the depths of the lake, with promises to ride on its back, only to drown the children once they left the shore. The earliest written record of Nessie dates from 565 AD, when St. Columbia is described as saving a man from a large sea serpent that had crawled out of the lake. Although many ancient sightings exist in folklore, the real breakthrough in Nessie's discovery occurred in 1933, when a road was built along the loch's northern shore. Although many witness reports footprint casts, footprints, what? <laughs> footprint casts and photographs from this time period exist, the best known occurred in 1934. Colonel Robert Wilson, a London doctor, photographed a strange serpent-like creature with its head and neck protruding out of the water. Published in several newspapers of the time, these photos seemed like uncontroversial proof that Nessie was real. From the photograph and eyewitness accounts, the Loch Ness Monster seems to be a large reptile with a long serpentine neck. The neck is made up of multiple arches and ridges. The creature is most likely more than 30 feet long, and footprint casts clearly show four toes. Very few other physical details are known. Toes? I don't remember Nessie having toes. Despite the preponderance of evidence collected during the 1930s, the Loch Ness Monster is widely thought to be a hoax. The footprints found near the lake were supposedly created by one man who stuffed a rhinoceros foot. Another man confessed on his deathbed to have faked a 1934 photograph using a child's toy submarine and a carved wooden serpent neck. Sonar sweeps of Loch Ness conducted by expeditions from the BBC, Oxford, Cambridge, and the Academy of Applied Science and University of Birmingham have all failed to find Nessie. Taken together, all the evidence, or lack thereof, has put an end to the speculation of most scientists. There's still many believers found all over the world. Maybe you can lend their arguments some credence by bringing Nessie to your very own zoo. Nessie will require a scientist, so let's get her set up. There we go. And we will assign a scientist to her. There you go. Your sole purpose is to look after Nessie. It will take a little while for her to hatch, so while she does, we'll go ahead and continue to work on this area around her exhibit.
looks like our girl is hatched. Let's see what all she needs. Too much dirt, not enough fresh water, more foliage, and more rocks, and more brownstone as well. Okay, we can take care of all of that. Let's start with the fresh water problem. Nessie comes out of the water to eat. I didn't know that. to go over 90 if we could, but that requires me grouping rocks together in fours, and it doesn't look very nice. Let's see. I noticed this while working. Let's fix it. There we go. Alright, Nessie's really happy in her new home. Let's improve the area around it so it doesn't look like a barren wasteland. Still, it looks nice. Uh, 
uh, what? One moment. Um. You good? Are these fences not good enough? Well, let's name you at any rate. There you go.
I just think maybe over here they have some supplies they need to take care of the animals. Maybe some broken pieces of equipment that need to be repaired and old exhibit signs, stuff like that. Oh, Nessie. I think these walls aren't good enough. I think we should replace them. Uh, let's replace them with the standard dinosaur fence. Yes. And we'll replace this part with the reinforced glass. And if that doesn't hold her, we'll send her back to Scotland where she rightfully belongs. well. You are happy, right? Even though I refer to her as a she, I have bought a male, that's fine. I didn't really think about that when I was buying uh, Nessie. Maybe we'll call him Nestor. And, uh, we will purchase... Oh, right, she has to hatch. But we will call her... Nessie. Now we have Nestor and Nessie. Okay. Back to this. Alright, so now I'd like to work on this area a little more. It looks a little rough around the edges now. But we're gonna add some more activities here, like the aviary. I think we'll start with some prehistoric amphibians. But I think I'm actually gonna place that over here, so there's more to do once you come down this way. This foot has given birth. We have a baby feet. Where's the baby feet? Baby feet. Show me the baby feet. Look at the baby. F okay. Everything is good. We'll call you Littlefoot. There you go. Welcome to the world. Are you all still happy here? Yes. Right. We can continue working over here. Oh. Nestor, you look happy. How about Nessie? She's also happy. That's great. dinosaur cinema, but I think I'd rather do 
this one. Guests will enjoy seeing prehistoric flying reptiles. That doesn't sound like a bad idea at all. Right? Just ask Jurassic Park. Like, if I went to a cryptid zoo, I would want to see prehistoric animals, for sure. So in these areas just here, I'm going to make small picnic areas where guests can have their lunch if they brought it with them. They don't need to eat at a restaurant or anything like that. I'm going to set up little grills that they can use to eat whatever they want. It's going to be kind of off the beaten path, like a small trail that you could take. separate this from the forest that will border it. We don't want them getting lost. I know they will. And don't worry, we'll put some things along the way that they can look at and enjoy. Look how big Nestor is now. I don't remember Nessie being purple, but that's okay. It says Nessie is ill, but the scientist is up there. He'll take care of her. about the artist who made the piece. Oh, it's Halloween. I can't believe we're already in year three. That seems pretty impossible. I've already spent like a million dollars as well. That's possible. That's a really nice little picnic area for our guests to use. Now we're gonna put a 
few things along the way that they can do. This is kind of a family area. I think we'll put the dino slide over here. Maybe just here. We could do a bit of a playground. Insect house can work. I wonder what kind of insect cryptids there would be. Okay, time to make this place look good. I think we could have some tiny cryptids and terrariums on display. This is quite a long walk for them. Maybe not that particular one. There we go.
that'll do it for today. I'm going to put a little more foliage down maybe off camera, but we do have both of our Loch Ness monsters in the exhibit now, and they're both really happy. We have our little picnic area sorted out down here. It's still quite a long walk for the guests, but I, I don't really care. They can do whatever they want. And down over here, we have our little Nessie exhibit. We're still flushing out this area. As you can see, we have a long way to go before we finish. But we did get a lot done today, so I'm happy. I can't wait to put down some more trees, my favorite thing. We're gonna put a few more in this area, but I don't wanna put too many because the helicopter will need to safely take off and land. But I like how we have all the buildings over here sorted out with all of their inventory, places for the scientists and zookeepers to rest and recover from their long shifts, as well as the maintenance shack and some bits and bobs just sprinkled around that they need to do their work. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. We'll do a little bit more next time. Anyway, I'll see you then. Take care.